Good evening and welcome to our Education Month 2021 Health and Wellness Seminar. Take Good Care of Me, Self-Care and Renewal from the Inside Out. I am your host for this evening, Dr. Denise Charles, representing the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training. And I want to say welcome to all of you who have taken the time to log in to our seminar this evening. When Jonathan Butler penned the lyrics to the well-known R&B song, Take Good Care of Me, he was pleading or admonishing um, someone else to take good care of him, to look after the affairs of his heart. But what our title this evening suggests is that the need to look after the self, the need to take care of our mental health, of our mental well-being, of our physical bodies, that need really resides with us. And we are responsible. It should be our number one priority. And that is what our title this evening suggests, that we need to take personal responsibility for our own mental health, for our own mental well-being, our emotional well-being, and of course, the beautiful gift that God has given us, our bodies. So this evening, we are going to be embarking on an interesting journey as we look at the whole issue of self-care and mental health, mental well-being, as well as the issues of taking care of our bodies and the connection between our bodies and our minds, our bodies and our souls, because we all know that we are much more than just a body, than just a physical body. And this week has been, well, on Sunday, I noticed that it was Mental Wellness Day. And I thought that this was a prime opportunity for us during this week to also focus in on mental health. And I know there are many other seminars around. I've seen a, a few of them. And the Ministry of Education is very pleased to be bringing this kind of focus to the educational discussion. Because as educators, as parents, as students, we are all people with myriad needs. And uh, we need to look after ourselves if we're going to be the best that we can be, both as professionals, as parents, and just as human beings. So I want to welcome you again to this session this evening. We have a very interesting panel lined up for you. And this evening promises to be very interesting and uh, very informative. We're going to be looking at our discussion in three major areas, and I will point them out to you. We will look at the new beauty industry of the 21st century and how our need to cater to our physical appearance, health, and well-being is essential for good self-care. So when we think of self-care, we don't only want to think of the inside, but we also want to think of the outside. Or we don't just want to think of the outside, but we want to think of the inside and hence our topic from the inside out. We will examine the issues surrounding mental health and emotional well-being. What does this entail and how can we see the links between our external self and our external self? And finally, we will examine the educational value of these areas as viable career choices in a 21st century century educational system, which when pursued by our students within a context of world skills can add tremendous social value and by extent national value. At this time, I will be introducing our panelists to you, a diverse group of excellent professionals. We have first Mrs. Alison Brown Ellis. Alison Brown Ellis is an experienced corporate executive with over 23 years of expertise. In her capacity as CEO, she leads a dynamic team and sets strategy for Cave Shepherd Card Barbados Inc. She holds an MBA with distinction from the University of Surrey and is also a certified John Maxwell team coach and an affiliate member of the Chartered Institute of Marketers and of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce. Alison is also the author of the highly acclaimed Life Lessons, a Purpose-Driven Leadership Journey. So we look forward to hearing from Alison this evening. We have as well Dr. Donna Matthew. Dr. Donna Matthew has been qualified as a medical doctor since 2002, having pursued studies at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus. In 2008, she opened her private practice in Sunset Press and also trained in Florida to be a certified eyelash extensionist and started offering that service in her medical practice. In 2011, she trained in Arizona in medical aesthetics and opened the aesthetics arm of her medical practice, offering services such as weight loss, Botox, Juvederm, mole removal, and skin care. We also have this evening in our panel, Maxine Thomas. 
Maxine is the winner of the Royal Fidelity Teacher Award in 2013. Maxine is an instructor in cosmetology at the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology. And she's also a part-time tutor at the Erdison Teachers Training College in the Adult Tech Bot Program. Now, Maxine has been at SJPI for over 24 years, so she's quite experienced in her field. She has been a beautician also for 35 years and is qualified in cosmetology and massage therapy and holds a master's in trichology. We have, uh, I don't want to say bringing up the rear because he's not quite bringing up the rear, but we have distinguished among the ladies this evening, Fabian Sargent. Fabian is a professional social worker with a master's in public health who has worked in youth and community development for 18 years. He's passionate about social justice along with men and family empowerment. Fabian is the founder and president of Men Empowerment Network Support, MENS, which is an organization that focuses on the emotional and psychological empowerment of men in Barbados. And finally, we have representing the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Hedda Phillips Boyce. Hedda has been an educator for over 35 years and has taught food and nutrition for most of those years. She has a passion for food and how it relates to health and has had and has had this passion from the time she was a teenager at the secondary school. So her natural progression was to further her studies in this area. She's presently the education officer responsible for all areas related to home economics. And one of her major responsibilities is healthy initiatives in schools. And her main goal is to see healthy school environments in all schools in Barbados. And to this end, she works with several stakeholders to implement initiatives to create food, safe food environments for the students of Barbados. So we have a wonderful panel um, this evening to explore this topic of, I'm gonna read it to you one more time, take good care of me, self-care and renewal from the inside out. You are watching the Ministry of Education's Education Month Health and Wellness Seminar. I am your host, Dr. Denise J. Charles. I've just introduced my panel, and they now are going to share their perspectives on the topic briefly before we begin the questions. I'm going to start with Alison. Alison. Thank you so much, Dr. Charles, and a special good evening to everyone. Um, I'm really intrigued by this topic, I have to say. It's one that has been, for some reason this year, it's been on my mind more than ever, uh, just because of the rigors of the last uh, 20 months in terms of living through COVID. Um, I, I definitely wanted to start by sharing that when you talk, when you speak about a topic that suggests that take good care of me, uh, self-care and renewal, it begins from the inside out, I would have to say that I'm a firm believer that it is your responsibility to take care of yourself. And therefore, once you owe that to yourself, as a for me as a professional coach, I actually am in a position where I think that there's so much more self-coaching that is needed right now. And I'm going to take my, my opening remarks from the perspective of really persons being more reflective about how they are pursuing their life. Uh, their daily lives and making sure that there's a conscious effort to, to, to really have an appreciation for what you're doing making sure that you find joy in what you're doing and fulfillment in what you're doing and that the things that you're investing your time in are actually giving you a return that brings some level of satisfaction and fulfillment. So basically for me, it's really trying to always ensure that as you're taking care of yourself, you're in a position to, to connect with a deeper purpose and ensuring that that purpose helps to drive everything that you do in terms of your, your normal execution, whether it's within your family, your, your career, uh, and just making sure that there's a balance to how you're doing what you're doing, because there's so much negativity around us right now. The one thing I would say is that what you do have control over is how you respond to what is happening around you. Uh, so it really does start from within us. And therefore, I was thinking through the topic, and I, I thought the mind actually is the most powerful aspect of, of how we are operating as human 
human beings. Uh, and it, many times it drives whether it's from a health perspective, but I, I thought of what I would consider a care formula when I was thinking through the topic. And when we're talking about the mind and how it helps to control what we do, how we operate, I, I think the mind is such a powerhouse. And the care formula I, I considered was really looking at our self-confidence, which is would be this would be the C in care, uh, and also our attitude, which would be the A, uh, reflection, which would be the R, and empathy, which would be, uh, I would consider the E. So when we look at a, a care formula and think, what does that mean in relation to confidence? It, confidence, as we all know, is, is really bred by self-belief. So it's really controlling how you are functioning at a professional or personal level because your self-belief is an internal trigger. It is one that determines how you will naturally show up in any situation uh, based on how you believe in yourself. And this is why the mind is such a powerful thing because in an environment where there's so much negativity happening around you, you need to be grounded in your mind um, in terms of how the level of self-belief that you bring to the table as an individual. And then I always say that your attitude is everything. Uh, I speak about this heavily in my book because it's another internal trigger that actually can have such an impact on our mental state. Uh, that it is so important that we, rec in this environment in particular, we start to recognize that there's so many obstacles coming at us day in and day out that how we, the, the position and the posture we take in terms of our mind and our attitude has a lot to do with how how we are functioning as human beings and the ability whether you're whatever situation you're in to be able to self-regulate when you are faced with difficult situations when i talk about reflection i'm talking about actually allowing yourself moments of 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 downtime so you can reflect and bring gratitude to everything that you do uh, for me uh having a a mind and a heart and a, a posture of gratitude is one that really helps to build your momentum and then empathy this is one that I find very intriguing because it really is even though empathy in, in in the dictionary terms is about having understanding and compassion for others it's really how do we then apply that to ourselves where we've put ourselves in a position to give ourselves some grace because there's so much happening right now recognizing that renewal comes from being able to to rejuvenate and actually take a step back and be able to to, to refill when we need to refill because the, the concept that we can't pour from an empty cup. So, you know, those are my uh, brief comments and I'm, I'm really excited about going through today's uh, webinar and the presentation and discussion. Thank you so much, Alison. We're gonna move over now to Dr. Matthew and she's gonna share her perspective. Thank you, um, panel, thanks for having me. Um, when I think about the topic, um, basically the body is made up of, there's a spiritual part and then the body. So you have to look at taking care of your spiritual um, aspect of the body. Um, I don't want to get too religious to take up too much time in terms of religion, but it's important in terms of connecting with whoever is your higher power, because that gives the body energy um, that helps the body to function. Um, the other part of the body that is important is the mental aspect or the mind. Um, what I normally recommend for my patients in terms of mental, there are different things that I recommend. Exercise is one of the first things that I recommend. Um, exercise about four to five days a week. It helps to produce endorphins. It helps the body to feel a lot better. And it helps in terms of the body synergy, in terms of the way that the body works. So exercise, things like meditation, things like yoga, those are things that come highly recommended in terms of um, benefits um, for the body. The other aspect that I looked at when I, when I talk, thought about the topic was looking at it from a food and nutrition perspective. Um, back in the day when I was a child, there was a lady by the name of Carmita Fraser. And her famous saying um, is, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. And you are definitely what you eat. So in terms of looking at 
um, from a nutritional perspective, I thought from my medical background that I would want to bring things that would help the body to restore the, the body cells from the inside out and make the skin look more attractive. So for instance, things like uh, fruits and vegetables, you want to have those high in your diet. You want to eat lots of things with vitamin C. So oranges, apples, um, watermelons, those types of fruits you want high on your list. You want a balanced diet. You want to have orange um, fruits and vegetables. So things like carrots, apricots, things in that um, come from that group, from that group in. And then you want also things like green leafy vegetables. So spinach, um, broccoli, um, kale, those types of vegetables. You also want to drink lots of water. Water helps because the body is 70% water and the cells in the body are replenished by the water. So the skin is hydrated, helps to be hydrated by using water. So less sugars, less sugary drinks and more water for breakfast, lunch and dinner. The other thing in terms of vet, um, fruits and veg are things that are high in zinc, especially for persons, for instance, who have issues with acne. We know for um, patients who have acne that they have low zinc in the diet. So they want things that, have, that are high in zinc. So things um, like cashews, almonds, um, those types of um, chickpeas, those types of um, lentils, those types of things are things that you want to incorporate into the diet to help your body from the inside out. Um, the other thing that is important, I mentioned things that are high in vitamin C, uh, tomatoes, which are high also in lycopene, that helps with the skin as well. So you wanna have your, in your salads, you wanna have your tomatoes. So you want the things mixed. And again, you don't wanna have the same foods every week. Try to mix it up. Um, the other thing that we look at in terms of foods are things that are high in omega uh, fatty acids. So sardines, salmon, mackerel, those foods you want to incorporate into your, into your diet. Um, last, but by no means least, I had mentioned um, the lycopene, which is also found in, in, in uh, fruits like watermelon. And um, as I said before, exercise is crucial. I think that the exercise also helps uh, from a mind body perspective. So if you can incorporate that along with your diet, I think that that is how you can get, how you can help to, to create a, a good healthy body from the inside out. The other thing that I don't want to forget is avocados. We have avocados all over Barbados, rich, very, very good for the skin. So incorporate avocados with your lunch or with your dinner, dinner daily. And that also helps to improve the skin. Thank you very much, Dr. Matthew. You're welcome. We invite Maxine at this time to give her opening remarks. Good evening, everyone. Good and evening, thank you for extending the invitation. My capacity here this afternoon, it will be to speak on professionals I, being able to identify the, uh, the professional, being, being able to recognize when, a when there's a professional and, uh, um, and understand the treatments that you're going to be going for. Um, the self-renewal, self-care self, um, self -care not only will start from home, but, it, but as long as you are able to, to um, to bring what your, your perspective and to bring your um, your understand that you are you are you and understand that 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 when you get out there and you you go to a, a, to have a treatment, what to expect um, at the at the institute. What we do is that we train, we will train persons to be able to recognize disorders. We will train persons to be able to, to understand the contraindications. And uh, you as the consumer will have contraindications. So um, persons who are um, 
who are who are going to have a service done, they must be able to understand and understand that the professionals that we are putting out and, and the professionals that you are going to um, will be and should be able to um, recognize um, those contraindications. We have quite a few horror stories out there where persons who are watching the YouTube and they're becoming um, they're becoming professionals through YouTube. And we are hearing of a lot of, of, um, of horror stories out there. Um, I, one, I, I, can, I can share one with you with um, persons who are putting on the eyelash extensions using the latex glue. Um, latex glue is not anything that needs to be close to your eyes. So understanding that when you are a professional, when you go to a professional, there are certain things that you will be, um, that you will be expecting from them. Um, not only their professionalism, but obviously good customer service um, and, and, and be, them being able to, to speak to you in a way that you understand, being able to give you advice um, so that things that you are, are not sure about, they would be able to, to um, you know, to advise you on. Um, we have, at the Institute, we have um, different courses that we can offer those, those, those um, offer to the persons who are prospective students. So I am just here, I just want to, um, to say that I am here to answer any of your questions as it relates to beauty, as it relates to how to, um, how to care for your hair, how to, how to identify um, um, a professional, what are some of the, the areas that, um, that we will be going into um, even at, at our institution. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Maxine. Fabian, please just make some brief opening comments. Yes. <laughs> Good evening. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as I as I look at the topic, you know, um, being the only male among the beautiful ladies, and hearing the contribution so far, I, I it made me wonder, like, wow, um, where, where does he may fit in this? Because because it all sounds, you know, like, yeah, we're talking about the ladies generally, but. Taking care of self um, is not a common topic that you really hear men talking about. You really don't hear men talking about, you know, doing things for themselves. And, and you know, you're more here, the ladies speaking about going to the salon and the spa and, 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 and all these things. You know, you don't really hear these things from men. But I think that this is extremely timely in an environment that is so stressful. And as a person, I work directly with men. I see and I hear daily of a number of stressors that men face. So, um, Trying to understand where to really, really start in terms of taking care of self is a real, real, I should say, important place for us. And the first thing that we need to really get to, if you're going to talk about self, is acceptance that there needs to be care. Okay, a lot of people do not really understand, well, uh, I need to take care of myself. I mean, that's the very first step. I mean, we could talk about all the other things, but if there's not acceptance, if, they, if we don't realize that there's something need doing, you know, my hair needs doing, my, my nails need attention, my, my mental state is not in the best place, you know, so acceptance is going to be one of the very, very main things that I think we should focus on as the discussion unfolds. And then also what it really means in terms of looking at self, looking at yourself from the inner person, because that is what it does. Where it really starts. I mean, we look at the topic self care and renewal from the inside and out. Everything starts from the inside. Many of us suffer from tremendous childhood traumas that we even take through, take through our entire lives, and that affects how we see ourselves as individuals. And then our immediate environment. You know, as I said, it is COVID. It's stressful. You know a lot of unemployment, There's, people don't have money, so they can't do a lot of fancy things. Some men don't even go to the barber like me. I started balling my head because I ain't got in the barber no more. So it is really, I just shave off the head altogether. You know, um, some men may not go that direction, so they may look unkept. So there are a number of things that we can look at through this entire discussion. Um, I would not go any further because you know we're strapped for time, but um, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much, Fabian. And finally, Heather, could you give your opening remarks, please? 
Good evening, Dr. Charles. Good evening, fellow panelists. Good evening, viewers. I would just like my the previous um, speaker to know that we're not only talking about the females, I'm talking about food and males eat food. So I wanna start by saying that we usually hear a lot of medical professionals and paramedical medical professionals speak about your health being your wealth. I've even seen a bumper sticker, or a couple of bumper stickers with the slogan, your health is your wealth. But do we really treat our body, this vessel that we call body, as though it is our wealth? Now, I, I want to reflect on back in the days. Let's look about 50 years ago. And I'm thinking about rural, rural as opposed to urban. Back in those days, there was the extended family. We had the grandmother who would be indoors. They were able to cook for the children in the household. Ground provisions, food that was taken from the land, the yams, the cassava, the sweet potatoes, green bananas, the fruits in the backyard. We used to expend some energy because some of them would bring water from the stand pipe. So we didn't have potable water on the inside. They took the livestock out. They used to call them stock in those days. So they take out the livestock. That was some way of getting some um, physical activity growing on, going on. They didn't have access to all these carbonated drinks. They would make their lemon A, their more B, the, the fruit drinks from the fruits grown in the grown in the yard. And macaroni pie and shepherd's pie for were for the higher up and the better off and higher ups. Let's go into our world now. We're always on the hustle. Evidence has shown that the those starchy roots and tubers that our four parents used to eat were high in fiber, high in vitamins, as Dr. Matthews would have mentioned, and minerals. We have now gone to convenience because we are, as I said, on the hustle. Sometimes we don't have the time to cook. Sometimes the kitchen is too hot to cook because we have our bedrooms on the cooler side of the, of the house. We allow the students to go and select the snacks. In my time, in my early 20s and as a teenager, a snack was food, small amounts of food eaten between a meal. A snack now is a packet of food that you take from the cupboard, which is high in salt, high in fat, high in sugar. So what has happened now? We have our young school age children who are overweight. I have a friend of mine who told me just this weekend her child has elevated blood pressure and type two diabetes. And guess what? That child is only 10 years old. So the numbers are of our school age children with the non-communicable diseases that my, people my age should be getting is escalating. I also want to mention too, and I'm gonna stop here in a minute, Denise, Note that back in the day, cuckoo and flying fish was our staple. Now it is macaroni pie and chips. We've got to find a way in helping our population understand that we are digging our grave with our teeth. And I'll stop there and I hope I get the opportunity to share some tips. Over to you, Denise. Thank you so much, Heather. All of you, each of you has shared something very insightful and very valuable with respect to our topic and extremely relevant. So I'm going to run straight into our questions because we want to have a segment of our program where we allow our viewers to also, um, you know, ask some questions. Maxine, I'm going to direct this first question to you. Um, before we can get into the, the why of beauty or the various aspects of self-care for both men and women. Let's look at the what. What would you, as your beautician, your cosmetologist, your experience in the area, you also teach in the area. So you should be very well um, au fait with this. 
what would you identify as the critical best practices of self-care for both men and women um, with respect to the beauty, external beauty? What would you identify as a beautician as the, the things that we as both men and women need to pay attention to. I know Fabian mentioned some things and said that men don't do this, men don't do that. And uh, as a beautician, you may not see a lot of men, but I, don't do, I do know some men who do go to um, cosmetologists. I want you to identify what are the critical best practices. And some men may go to the barber, et cetera. What would you identify as those things that both men and women need to pay attention to in terms of grooming of the self in your area? One yeah, one thing is skin, definitely skin. Um, you find that um, a lot of people don't take care of the skin. They think that it's, it's, it, we're, we're, we have we're black skin and we don't have to do anything with it. Um, but something as simple as putting on um, a sunscreen or a moisturizer, it is really important that we moisturize the skin on a daily basis. And that is not only for females, but also for men. Um, I, I, have, I, have, um, I have heard um, a saying where they say black don't crack. But mm -hmm. if it's exposed to the, sin, to the sun too long and for over a period of time, it will crack after a time. Um, and especially if we are not um, moisturizing as we should. I heard um, Dr. Matthew say, um, said earlier that we need to make sure we drink water. That's one thing that we do not do enough of. We don't drink enough water as, as, um, as, as persons on a daily basis. Um, but moisturizing, 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 that is one of the, the crucial things that both men and women need to do. As we get older, um, you will find that we will lose the elastic, elasticity from our skin. And we will also, um, be, based on what we've been doing, get the, the darker, darker marks within our skin. It may be surface or it may be deeper, but definitely the sunscreen. And as we get older, a higher level of sunscreen um, would obviously be, be better. Thank you so much for that response. You were very You're thorough. Welcome. You've noted that we need to look after our skin. We need to use water. We need to look at moisturizing and we need to use sunscreen, even those of us who have darker skin. Thank you. Alison, now we have today's beauty industry, which if you are one who, you know, you're on Instagram or you're on any of the social media sites, you know, you, you, you see the abundance of selfies and the focus on self. And it's very much a part of today's popular culture among all age groups. Um, why are, I want you to look at this whole concept of us being so focused on ourselves um, in terms of how we present ourselves in, in public spaces. Do you think there is a link between that need or that desire to look good and our inner need to feel good about ourselves? And how can we connect the two so that it is really beneficial to us uh, and that we don't just turn into a surface person? How do we see those links between what we look like and who we are on the inside? That's a really good question, uh, Dr. Charles. I think that a lot of times, uh, I, I always say social media has really created a, a monster um, that is, it is so so difficult now to tell what is genuine and what is authentic. And only this week I was saying to someone, you have to always, first you have to move thyself, right? You have to understand who you are as a person so that whatever you're projecting in the social media world is a true reflection of who you are. Uh, but to do so, you need to be able to, you have to spend that time with yourself. You have to understand who you are as a person, how you you want to be to be to be received by others and how you want to be perceived because ultimately whatever you put out there in the social media world persons are forming opinions of you based on those on those uh whether they're selfies or you know just even your general comments once they're put out there in the universe persons are busy forming their own perceptions of you and when i speak about topics like personal branding i always say that you need to ensure that whatever you're projecting is coming from your core. 
It has to be tied to your core values. It has to be tied to the vision that you have for your life. Like literally, where do you want to go in this life? And are the comments, the suggestions, if the, the images that you're putting in social media, are they aligning with the path that you're interested in pursuing? And I always say that if that is not, if there's a mixed match happening there, then you need to conduct a self audit. And I, you know, a lot of persons don't spend enough time just really getting to understand their internal drivers. Uh, sometimes it's a need to be seen, a need to be heard that is driving you versus the reverse, which is really what is within you. And, and I'm a so I'm on social media actively, uh, but it is because I've I've recognized that I have a message that can help the young professionals coming behind me. So everything I do, everything I that I put out there is connected with that purpose. Right. And I, I think that sometimes there is a there is that mixed match that really takes our young, um, younger career professionals off course. And I always say, you know, you really have to take a step back to be able to move forward. So that, that's an excellent contribution, Alison, because I, I really do agree with you with respect to the whole question of promoting a personal brand and ensuring that what we create, that digital footprint that we create, how we, um, you know, identify on the various social media platforms that we may utilize that, you know, they're connected and that they point to an authentic sense of who we really are and what we're hoping to achieve in life. So that's really an excellent contribution and one that can serve all of us well, whether we're educators or not. And actually, it's something that I have noticed that educators tend to shy away from, you know, we know that teaching is seen as a service. And sometimes educators shy away from the idea of promoting their competencies and their skills in the public domain. But it's an excellent strategy for networking and for building professional community as well. So an excellent contribution. All right, um, I'm gonna to move to a, a, another um, segment that I, I started with, um, Maxine. So I'm gonna come back to you. Um, and this one is, is perhaps near and dear to me because I'm also a, a natural hair person. I want you to, 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 to speak to the natural hair movement, which is currently um, a big thing, you know, not only in Barbados, but I, I guess uh, across the black diaspora, the whole move towards preserving our hair, treating it well, et cetera, is, is, is very much um, present today. But I've noticed that there are so many products on the market and we can make some bad choices with respect to what we choose, what we put in our hair. We can actually choose too many products or products that conflict with each other. So I want you to give us some guidance with respect to the types of, um, well, we do have different types of natural hair and not everybody's hair is the same. And even if your hair is not natural and it's processed, you know, you still have a natural hair type. I want you to point us in a direction that would help us choose the right types of product for our hair. And this goes for whether we are male or female. And this is a critical part of taking care of ourselves because we know that in many respects to see our hair as our glory. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, we recognize that there is that, that push and for the, to the natural hair movement, but um, it's still here. It's still here. And you find that a lot of people do not do the basic things to it, brush it. You still need to brush it you st because we have our natural oils that will definitely, as we brush it, come towards the, the, the hair shaft. We also need to, um, to when we're buying our, our, our products, make sure that it has that gl a glycerin base, make sure it's a moisturizing base because our type of hair, our, our um, ethnic hair, our Afro-Caribbean hair is... is desirous of moisture even if it is even if it is chemically processed yeah mm -hmm. so um so you find that the self the the shampoos that are free from sulfate the, those are the shampoos that need to we need to use for our, our um, type of hair and especially the natural hair and that is because you want something that is going to start moisturizing from the beginning um, so moisturizers um, shampoos that have a moisturizers like I said the glycerin the glycerin is a moisturizing um, has a moisturizing effect on you um, and and the oils, when you're finished shampooing, when you're finished conditioning the hair again with something that has a moisture, um, a humectant, you need to make sure that you put the oils 
on the hair and put the oils on the hair when it is wet, when it is still wet. Because if you put the oil on the hair when it is dry, it's just going to stay on the surface of the hair shaft. So you need to make sure that you, you moisturize that hair while it is wet so that the, you, you know, the, the moisture um, goes into the hair and lubricates the hair from the inside. But so, more important, yeah. Maxine, can I can I pop in here? Does that mean that we should spray our hair? I know there are some there are some people who wear locks like I do, or natural twists, and they, they 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 say you should spray your hair with water every day. Is that something that you would advise? You, I I would I would prefer oil, um, more of an oil because you're going out there in the elements you're going you have the exhaust from the car you have the air conditioning units um running both in the car and in, in your workplaces you have um you have all the the all the different elements the sahara dust all those things will have an effect on the hair and it will cause the hair to be dry um so you need something that somehow will form a barrier on that hair um and to help yeah and to help moisturize the hair at the same time so your moisturizer i i would not advocate um spraying with water every day i would i would advocate oiling both scalp and hair because we tend to put things on the on the hair and forget this and forget that there's a scalp yeah but the scalp because again of the elements because of the 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 um the ac and everything will dry out um you don't find you wouldn't find persons brushing their hair if they have locks but you can go in and you can massage the scalp but definitely um shampoos that are free of sulfate and, and moisturizers and oils thank you thank you, you so much thank you i'm going to direct this question next to both heather and dr matthew I'm not sure which one is going to go first. Um, we hear a lot about the types of products that we should use, as was said just now by Maxine, products free, free of sulfates. And I know they say we should also look for products that do not carry SD alcohol. Um, but what role does diet play in hair, in our, the, the care of our hair or the way our hair looks? Um, do we need to turn to all of these products or we, can we just rely on drinking enough water and perhaps using natural things like the aloe vera plant and the guava leaves, which is, which is expected to grow our hair? What, what is your opinion? What are your opinions about this? Both of you. Perhaps right. can tack in a little bit. Um, hair growth is, is genetic. So I think people have to understand that first things first. Sometimes patients come to me and they say, I want my hair long like my friend zone. And I say, it depends on what, what, your, what genes you have. It okay. depends on what, what your parents have. That would depend on, on, the, on the length of hair that you have. But in terms of hair care, you want to definitely eat foods that are rich in the fatty acids. So those foods that I talked about, the salmon, the mackerel, the sardines, things that are rich in vitamins E, uh, vitamin E, that would definitely help because those things help in terms of strengthening the hair um, and keeping the hair healthy, keeping the scalp healthy. Um, avocado is another one that is good, a good food for the hair. And you can even use those, the avocado as a form of conditioner. So I've seen um, videos where they use mixtures of avocado, aloe vera, vitamin E as a at home conditioner to put on the hair and scalp. And that actually, help, actually helps with the, with the hair itself. Um, but definitely the diet is, is uh, the definite part health, of it. But mm -hmm. it, it depends a lot on the genetics. It depends on your genes to determine in terms of the hair growth and what length of hair you, you, will, you will get. Thank you. Heather, anything to add? Yeah. Heather? Oh, I'm not sure if she's hearing me. Sorry. Oh, we can, okay. <laughs> we cannot underestimate the importance of water. Mm -hmm. I know Dr. Matthews would have mentioned this, but water is very important and it's very important for our skin because as Dr. Matthews said, 70% of our body composition is made up of water. So it's important that we drink water, make water our first choice of drink. If you allow me, Denise, 
I was hoping, I'm hoping that I would get this question, but in case I don't, I just um, play some sugar in a, in a glass so that you can see how much sugar that we consume when we drink a bottle of Coke. This is the amount of sugar that we are getting from this bottle. Okay. I do not think that people understand the amount of sugar that they're putting in their body when they drink these drinks. And it's not only Coca-Cola, it is a lot of the carbonated drinks. So I would like to suggest that um, we select water as our first choice of drink. I am not saying do not drink carbonated drinks. I would say, however, it should be an occasional, an occasional, yes. Yes. but not, it should not be drunk on a regular basis. And by the way, if we added water to this, this would be ghastly sweet. It is not sweet when it is, when it has carbon added to it, the carbon okay. kind of mass, the sugar. So it's not going to taste that sweet, but the reality is we are sweet. placing too much sugar in our body, which is affecting our health. I can't say I know what the effect is on the hair though, but water is important for our hair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Fabian, I'm going to direct this next question to you. Um, there is that stereotype, and you did mention it at the beginning, the perception that men perhaps aren't so much into this type of thing as they need to be. Although I think that we have seen a shift because I've been seeing quite a number of videos with men with um, weaves to, co you know, to cover a balding um, skull or even with beard weaves. Yes, even men are doing those things. But with respect to looking after the body, um, with respect to men, we're thinking about the need for, for exercise, obviously the need to eat well, the need to have regular doctor visits, to check their prostate, to check even their breasts, because even as we focus in on, on breast health in this month, we know that it is not only women that need to check their breasts, but also men. Um, how can we stress this importance to men, the importance for them to look after this these aspects of themselves without feeling without them feeling that this is a bit of feminization you know that we're trying to make them into women or something like that how can we get men to be more focused on their health in a way that is palatable to them you know how would you as a male you know as a social worker working with men how would you tackle something like this in terms of helping men to be more focused on on themselves so there's a um twofold approach um, I believe that any type of change that you really want to, to see, you have to start at the beginning. And um, it boils down to how we, how, we, how we groom and how we socialize our young boys who then become young men. So we need to really start there. I mean, I'm a father of an 11-year-old son who's now going through puberty and that type of stuff. And I mean, we, we usually have these talks, you know, and he's like, but daddy, why are you supposed to put on this? How am I supposed to do this? How we should do that, you know? But, it, it, but we need to start having conversations with our young boys. And let them understand that, that this, this whole false sense of masculinity that exists, you know, that we need to really get rid of that. You know, if you're, you're, you, need, you need to look a particular way, you need to carry yourself, your clothes, you know. So therefore, we have to have good conversations with our young boys and build relationships. And that is where it is falling down, you know, not having those relationships and not having those conversations and leaving the education to the internet or leaving the education for other people to do. So parents have a really big role. They need to step up to the plate in terms of educating their young boys and having them understand the importance of taking care of themselves uh, from the here right to, to our nails you know it is okay to to have your nails done um the first time i experienced such i was an adult <laughs> i mean you know going i get my nails done and that was not in barbados that was overseas and i felt i mean it was amazing just looking at my nails all the time you know um just buffing them and having that done i was a, i was an adult um, in another country so we need to have boys seeing these things understanding the importance of it understanding what it does to your self-image and once you feel good on the outside you know it helps with what 
is happening on the inside. As I said earlier, we have a lot more hurting on the inside. But sometimes even me, you know, sometimes you feel stressed and I decide, you know, I go and buy myself something and put on some nice clothes and, and you know, a nice shave, nice haircut. Then you start to feel much better about self. So once we start there with those young boys, I am telling you because we often forget that boys become men. You know, some people say, my man, he too young for this and he too young for that. But we are, the mind is grooming all the time. The, mind is obs the brain is observing, is seeing what is happening. You know, so that is where you really need to start at that age. In terms of the older men now, we know you have to start to talk to these men. Sometimes it's a bit difficult because a lot of them are set in their ways. But what usually happens is that I find that in order to get that type of change in these grown men, they usually do it with observation. For me to be telling a man, man, you know, I really think that, Men supposed to be um, doing doing this, getting the hair or the nails done or that, you know. But if you see that I do it and I go to guys and I say, well, you know, well, this is what I did today or, or, or this is what I may do. I find that they tend to follow trends. Like, okay, you did that, you know, especially if it's something that is not traditional, something that is not, not normal, quote unquote. For the average guy to do and as you said earlier there are some trends that are changing you know men's are some men are going to this bear i mean the bears and the braids and all these things i mean i'm not saying it in the rural uh, communities that i'm usually in but i know that there's a, there's a section of the society that go into all these different types of trends and i know the internet is a funny place and these things get, get these things pass on quite easily you know but once we get men a lot more professional men doing things, taking care of their bodies and having a lot more conversations with their friends or with other men, then we can start seeing that change that, um, that I guess would be towards the betterment of self in terms of how men, how men um, are seen or how they carry themselves in society. Hey, when you said something very important when you started, you spoke about the way boys were raised. And I am always, I've always been very concerned about this. And uh, I'm wondering if there's a connection between how we raise boys, how we raise girls, and then some of the challenges that men grapple with as adults with respect to their own emotional well-being um, and their mental health. Because we raise girls in a way where they connect easily with each other. They're very supportive, generally speaking, you know, in terms of how girls become best friends. And they're very supportive, very empathetic. And, and that's, that's sort of um, cultured into the way that we raise girls. Then we raise boys to be a lot more independent, you know, to be a bit more rambunctious and so on. And we see that as being disconnected from their sense of, of their own emotional self uh, and that sense of being reflective and so on. How does this impact a man when now, you know, he's going through these challenges, he's lost his job, you know, um, and he feels a sense of I isolation. He, he can't connect with his brothers. He can't connect with anyone else to really share with them what he's going through. And this exposes him to serious mental health challenges, even suicide ideation. How can we tackle something like this? So as you said, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a societal issue, a cultural issue. And um, the only way that we can probably change that culture is by really starting the change process uh, with the younger boys. As it relates to the older ones who, who are very deep into the culture, support systems are going to be extremely important. Um, the more support systems we have, and that is why um, I form the men's group, whereas you want to give men an avenue, a forum where they can come out, where they can talk, where they can see other men, where they can rub shoulders, you know, where they can understand, well, like, you know, it is okay to feel vulnerable. It is okay to give ourselves. It is okay to cry. Okay, a lot of these men have not been taught, let's say, an emotional vocabulary, so they don't even know how to express themselves. Yes. Communication yes. has been a major, major um, downfall in relation to men. So even in terms of self-care and, and having men express what they want um, traditionally, because they, they, they have not been able to, to really speak it. They have not been able to say, you know, we, we've been mute for so long, our vocabulary is so limited that we really just know the, some 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 a lot of men only know good and okay how you doing okay you know yes. they don't know they don't have an expansive vocabulary no, to really so to really tap into the true feelings because sometimes a man may be feeling something on the inside you know but it's very difficult to even express it and if that happens as adults you can imagine a young young boy let's say in secondary school now 
who are going through puberty, who are dealing with online school, a shifting environment. They are not getting to see the girlfriends anymore, so they ain't getting to dress up no more. I remember I mean going to school in my fifth my my own secondary school life, you know, that was the dress up stage. You know, everybody want to go, want to go out on weekends or you're, you're mm-hmm. going to a little cruise here or school fair. Yes. And these are things that young boys will look look forward to, to really sell themselves, make themselves feel good. Um, but a lot of that is lacking now, along with not having that vocabulary and not having that ability to express self. That is why as big men, when they go through or going through these, these, these real traumatic experiences, it makes it even more difficult. So I would say that, the 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 uh, that the support systems are very very important, and I always encourage all the organizations, the community organizations, churches, government, non governmental, to really get involved in terms of providing that supportive um, environment. Excellent, that's an excellent response, and I think it has far-reaching effects in terms of what we do at the level of the home, what we do at the level of the community, as you mentioned, the churches, the service clubs, the, the, the athletics clubs, and those types of areas where men interface and also what we do in the school. So it is really very critical that we socialize our boys in a way that they can grow into the type of men that we need them to be in terms of having the sense of self-awareness so that they can take better care of themselves and then they're in that position certainly they're poised to better t- to take better care of their families as well. So thank you so much for that intervention, Fabian. You're welcome. Um, Dr. Matthew, um, I, I, I know that today there is a, a big um, focus, as we said earlier, on looking good and um, changing how we look, you know, perhaps dyeing our hair, extending our eyelashes, whether permanently or just for a period of time. Um, some people are even tattooing eyebrows and, and they're doing different things to, to, to alter their appearance. And there's nothing wrong with this, you know, to some degree in terms of, you know, our abilities to, our ability to want to look good and to feel good about ourselves. Even some people are going to route a plastic surgery. Um, do you see a conflict in terms of the, the, the whole question of beauty standards and ethics and the need to cater to individual needs? Where do we draw the line? And, and when, when as a doctor, are you aware that this patient may, may have some deeper issues that need to be addressed? Because I see this as all an aspect of self-care. Um, yes, you're delivering services, but you want to ensure that your clients, your patients, that they, they, are, they are emotionally sound, that they are mentally sound. You know, where do we draw the line in, in these types of scenarios? Thanks for that question. That's an excellent question. Um, There's a saying in medicine where we say, do no harm. Mm -hmm. And the key is to make sure that whatever treatment we give to the patient will make the patient better, but it doesn't cause any harm to the patient. Mm -hmm. Um, Case in point, sometimes I have patients who come for Botox. Botox is a medicine that we give to stop wrinkling. And I know what they need and I give them what I think they need and they come back asking for more. And I know that that is not what they need. And I have to convince them that is not, that they don't need that. And I know it's an emotional problem that I'm dealing with here. Yes. And I have to sit and talk to them because they want to force my hand to over inject them to give them more and more and more. And I know they don't need any more based on how they look. So I have to draw the line as a medical professional to say, okay, you've had enough and we're not giving you any more. I'm going to see you back in three months when this set has been out and we will go from there. All right. But you still have patients that sometimes I find if I don't do it, they might go to another doctor and try to push the other doctor to do it. Sometimes you see it on on TV too with the plastic surgeons where the women have um, breast implants, for instance, and they have, the doctor tells them they they need a C cup, but they want a D or E or F and it doesn't suit their body type. And the plastic surgeon has to be wise enough to say, this is what we're doing. We're not doing anything anything more because it can cause a problem to your health. So we have to, to make up in our minds that we are the leaders and that we have to to guide the patients accordingly and don't let them guide us with what they think 
you know, is the best thing, and you know, for them. So we have to, it has to be a kind of, um, meet, I have to meet them halfway and then meet me halfway. But I don't, I try not to encourage them to, to go overboard. Because as I said to my patients, if you've had work done, I want people to take a look and say, she looks really, or she looks really good for their age. But I don't want them looking and saying that person has had Botox or filler or plastic surgery. I don't want them to know. So it should be, it should be a case where it enhances the look, but it should not be a case where they look, you know, abnormal. When you look at them, it should still look relatively natural. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to remind our viewers, it is just after 7 p.m. and you are free to ask questions of our panel. Um, please drop your questions in the YouTube chat and uh, we will get them and we will try to answer them. So please, at this point, our viewers, you can ask questions of our panel this evening. Um, as we drill more down into our discussion, Alison, I know that you are a top corporate executive at one of our leading companies. And uh, um, we know that when it comes to business, we, we tend to see a certain set of skill sets that we would want in people who are going to get involved in business in people who are going to maybe even have their own businesses or lead and manage companies or even just work in a business setting. Um, but as a, as a top executive and someone who works in the area of coaching as well, what are some of those competencies or skills that you are looking for that fall outside the ambit of, you know, what would perhaps come with a degree that we perhaps today, yes, call, we perhaps maybe sometimes call them soft skills, but they really speak of an, an individual who is well integrated, who's in touch with himself or herself. Um, what are those skills that you're looking for that we can seek to perhaps incorporate into our educational program so that we can help our students to understand that when you go there into the world, yes, looking important is important. Um, having a degree or having your certificates is very, very important, but it is also important to have some inner competencies, what we tend to call soft skills, which I like to call super skills. Um, what are some of those skills that you think that we should emphasize? Yeah, I, I thank, thank you for the question. I can get very, very passionate about this one. <laughs> well, what I would say to you is that I've reached a stage in my career where I no longer refer to these skills as soft skills. Exactly. These are fundamentals for me. So, right. so even in terms of interviewing about five years ago, I said, I said to my management team, listen, I'm not hiring or we are not hiring another person that does not meet X, Y, Z skills. And I'll go through those in a bit because I am have, having seen so many uh, career professionals struggle in certain areas. I can tell you that we can train anyone for the technical competencies. We cannot bring a good attitude to the job. Mm -hmm. So that's the first one. And that's why I always say when I sit in interviews, I'm normally quiet for the first few minutes because I really want to assess that person. And I'm looking for the attitude that comes out. And because the, 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 level, of, the level of positivity that a person brings to the job, it makes a huge difference in how they will manage change. And as we all know, we've been weird going through some really turbulent times. So the change is rapid. So mm -hmm. you need to be able to keep up. But to do that, you have to have such a, a positive outlook that it, that it doesn't set you in, in one, particular, um, one particular corner where you literally are like, oh my God, what is happening? You are adaptable to what is going on around you. So, so And these things tend to come up very easily in the interviews because you could literally gauge how persons are responding. Another thing that I tend to look for um, in terms of interviewing is persons that tend to, they, they have that open mind, that concept of wanting to learn and to gather, to, 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 be, able to, to be able to then regurgitate and be able to build on what they already know. So they're grounded in, I don't have to know everything, but I'm open to learning everything. And I think that that makes a huge difference to help people come to
And that naturally, naturally then leads to persons uh, showing greater competence in terms of their leadership, because you don't have to carry the title of manager or the title of leader uh, to be able to lead. You naturally, based on how you're positioning yourself to learn and to grow within an organization, you naturally start to emerge as a leader. So, 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 and then we talk about things like your confidence that naturally then starts to come. The more you do, the more you step forward, the more confident you become. So these are things that start to emerge. But I would have to say to you, hands down, uh, the areas such as you know, their ability to lead, their ability to maintain a positive attitude and bring a positive outlook to the job, those things make a huge difference. And for me, in, especially in this environment, is managing through the rigors of change. That is huge in this environment. But I don't, I'm not, I would have to say that managing th through change for me is one that starts with the mind. It's a mindset that you have to bring uh, to the table, a mindset that you have to bring to the job that makes you a top tier professional. And, and this is, those are some of the points I would initially say. There's so many other uh, fundamentals, but when, when I, if I were to give a top three, it would be your, your uh, ability to adapt how flexible you are as a career professional. That mindset, which is all triggered by your attitude and, and your ability to start to step forward as a leader, regardless of which level you're at in the organization. Excellent responses, Alison. But what role does self-care, mm. taking care of you, reflecting, renewing yourself, what role does that play in your emergence as that type of individual that you're speaking about? I, what I would say to you, and, and this is a very important one, because, you know, I, 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 when it comes to how you show up in terms of how you dress, that makes, and I think someone referenced that earlier, that makes a huge difference to how you how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was on another webinar uh, last week and I said, to, I said to this lady, listen, for me, I dress based on my mood. So I am not one that will have an outfit put out for the, the night before because depending on how high or how low I'm feeling, I adapt my outfits to those to, to reflect that because there's a lot of en mental energy that I'm exhausted every single day so if I'm already at a low and I know that I need to have a, a pick me up to go into the office the next day you can guarantee that I'm going to, to work in a power suit and the reason for that is because the better I feel on the outside, I, that starts to translate on the inside. So I get a boost of energy, you know, I'm walking with more confidence. And this is something that I share with career professionals, because you cannot come to work, whatever is happening at home. And yes, we have many, many distractions, but you come to work as though you're dragging yourself and then I expect to feel better. You, you set your tone in terms of the mood that you bring on any given day to the job. Excellent. So there is a connection between the colors we choose. As you said, that power suit, you know, the, the pastel tones that you may prefer for another day. And I get you. I understand what you're saying, you know, be, especially when you know that you're going to be faced particularly with a, um, maybe a specific challenge. You want to go with some extra arsenal <laughs> to help Absolutely. you get through that day. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Um, Heather, I'm going to tap back to you for a little bit. Um, you know, we're talking a lot about that external expression of our energy, that external expression about how we feel. Um, how can we get the messaging across um, about the need for us to pack our, 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 our bags with that power packed lunch, you know, with that energy boosting drink, something that's going to be healthy, something that's going to take us through the day. And that is also going to help us to face the challenges that we face as professionals or as parents. Um, what is the messaging going to be like for that? And any tips that you can give as to the, the type of things that we can have with us daily to, to, to take us through the day in terms of meals, snacks in yes, a few sir. minutes? Yeah. Yes, Denise. Well, whenever we're thinking about preparing a meal, okay, it's going to be a lunch, whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch, whether it's dinner, it must be balanced. It must have your carbohydrate, your protein, your vitamins, minerals. That translate to a protein, whether it is from an animal or whether it's a vegetable product, your carbohydrate, whether it's a grain or our root vegetables, 
And of course, you must have our ve your vegetables. But what I find with our culture is that a lot of people, they like the meat, they like the carbohydrate, and they might just have a, a spoonful of coleslaw, which is, of course, high in fat. So my suggestion would be make sure, ensure that your packed lunch is balanced. If you're taking a lunch, whatever meal it is, it should be balanced. On the morning, you don't go and pick up a, a um, juice drink because a juice drink is just as bad as a carbonated drink. It just has just as much sugar. You're going to go on a high and a very quick low. So your, your, your meals need to be balanced because as, I, as, as was mentioned in another forum, if you don't take care of your wellness, you could bet your last dollar you can take care of your illness later. So you want to ensure that you, your meals have your carbohydrate, have your fat and have your, your vitamins and minerals. And those energy boosters are quite good as well. If you're on the run, you, you can't afford to sit down and have a proper breakfast because the reality is we are on the move and I get that, I get it. We are on the move. We are, it's a very fast paced lifestyle that we live now. Uh, energy booster is good, it's good. It is very, very filling. And that will, that, that will um, keep you sustained until you're ready for your balanced lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Alison. Um, well, I know that, sorry, not Alison, Heather. You know, I, I know that many of us think of unwinding on the weekend as adults, you know, with a little drink, perhaps a glass of wine or a cocktail or something like this. How, how damaging is something like this for our health? You know, is it, is it um, should it be seen as a, a cheat day if you just have that um, surreptitious drink on a Friday evening or a Saturday, uh, how much of this is good for us? A glass of wine is fine. I drink <laughs> a glass of wine every once in a while. But matter of fact, I usually have wine every Sunday with my lunch. So wine really is, is fine. Um, a glass a day for females, a glass a day is, is fine. A red wine, fine. red wine I heard. Red wine is good. Yes. Um, Denise, permit me, because you did ask me if I could share some tips, and I really want to get this in. Sure. Quickly. Now, okay. Now, we are now accustomed to preparing our, our meals on Sunday. We prepare for Sunday, for Monday. If we are on a hustle, we're always on the go. Why can't we prepare meals for one day for another or batch cook? so that we're not tempted to go to the fast food, the fast food restaurant or um, prepare our by convenience foods, which are high in salt, high in sugar, high in fat, and which is not very good for our health. Uh, I also want to give, give um, the viewers on this call some tips. If you are preparing a pack of peas, we're a nation that like peas and rice, cook a whole pack of peas. We have the refrigerator. Make good use of the freezer. Freeze the remainder. We use salt fish. Soak the entire salt fish. Makes it easier for us to take down that salt fish and prepare whatever it is we're going to prepare. And I want to say something about corned beef. We tend to vilify, vilify corned beef, but during hurricane season, we're telling persons we need to get our canned foods. In the event, we don't have any electricity. What I want to say about corned beef, it is, it is high in salt. But if you cut up, if you prepare your onions, your sweet peppers, and you add some sweet corn, that can of corned beef, which I need to say here, is supposed, supposed to serve six people. We need to start reading food labels. Can serve double the amount, and you're not getting as much sodium. We've got to become creative when we're preparing our, our meals. We have to encourage our teenagers to start food preparation. We're spoiling them. When they leave our homes, they start having our fam their families or they're going overseas 
they they're not they can't take care of themselves because we've done them wrong by not allowing them to participate. And I want to add, I'm this is going to be the last thing I'm going to say, Denise. There are other pointers I can share. And if time allows, allow me to, please. We need to start planting some foods. You may not have the land, but you can start planting some things in pots and planters. And if you get your children involved, especially the little ones, I'm sure that they are going to want to um, eat those, eat the the fruits of their labor. Thank you so much for those pointers, Heather. And um, I, I take your point that we really need to begin to look at what we eat daily. We need to begin to look at our food preparation practices. And perhaps we can begin to save some money. I know that people need to make money as well in terms of those who sell food, but we still need to bring a greater level of control into what we consume into our bodies and to ensure that even when we do buy food from others, that we buy what is healthy and best for us. So thank you so much. I wanna direct this next question to Maxine. I haven't seen any questions coming in from our viewers. So Maxine, you are directly involved in education at the tertiary level. Um, and you are seeing many of the students leaving secondary school with an interest in cosmetology, in aesthetics and the beauty industry. Um, what type of advice are you giving to these students with respect to this particular career pathways pathway, sorry. And even though you are training them specific competencies in terms of being able to use the right products and being able to recognize hair problems and, and perhaps manage treating hair and styling hair, et cetera, what, are, what other skills are you looking for in these students who are pursuing this type of program? I heard um, Alison, forgive me for calling you Alison, um, speak about attitude. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is everything. Because if a student comes in with the correct attitude, we can train them, we can, um, and, and, and they can, um, they're moldable, yeah? Yes. Um, they're coming in from the this, from this secondary school, did some of them will have the skill. Yes, we do have students coming in who are doing it for the first time or who may have been someplace else and, and did the training, but um, just want a certification. Um, and what we find more uh, um, coming out from those students, yes, they have skill and they, they, they want to learn the skill, but there are come in um, with a, a get rich attitude mm -hmm. is that a, I can say that yes. um, they think that they think that they can they can do this um, come in train and then go out there and open a business yeah um, but they have to understand that there is something called experience yes we are promoting persons um um, person self self-employed persons but we need to have persons um get the experience because you coming out from um from a from a, a, a from doing a course does not fully qualify you there are things that you will go out there and you will learn people's skills um punctuality because some of these students some of these persons think that they can just jump up at 9 30 and, and, and start a job at 10 but they they need to understand that that you know there's that punctuality there is that attitude to um to to for customer service, greeting the customer. So those are things that we want to see coming out in this in the student. And, and not that they, are, they want to just leave the institution or whichever institution, it could be secondary school or it could be us, leaving the institution and just going out there just to cut out the other person that is out there. Um, we, uh, we want persons to understand that it's a profession and we want we want to work together. We want to support each other. You as a, as a, as a stylist will not know everything. Um, so we need to get into that networking and we want to see that coming out in our young persons where they are networking because if there's something that they cannot do, there should be somebody else that you can send them to though. 
-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's somebody else that you should be able to recommend you. So building that network and building that circle around you that if there's something, if you have a customer that there's something that you cannot deal with that, Hey, you can, um, you can, you can send that person to, um, you can recommend, you, you can do a referral, yeah? right but direction. definitely the, we want to, we want to look at per, that networking and that building support um, of, of, of persons going on to do advanced training. Those are things that, that you want students to, um, to be able to, to, uh, to comprehend and not going on the YouTubes and the, and, and other places and picking up these, these skills because you are dealing with people though. You are dealing with mannequins. You are dealing with people. And you have to understand that when you, when you, um, as, when, when you are working on someone that there are there, there are feelings, there is, you, and you have to respect the person's, the person's time and the person's space. Okay, thank you, Maxine. You're welcome. I know we've had uh, an extended discussion this evening and it would be remiss of me if I were not to mention the challenges that many of us have faced, um, both um, at the personal level and I think obviously at the community, at the family level, at the community level and now at the national level with respect to COVID-19 and all of the changes that it has brought to our country and to the way that we live our lives, et cetera. And if you're looking at the discussion of beauty and wellness, self-renewal, and taking care of the self from the inside out, you know, it would be remiss of us not to mention how COVID-19 has perhaps been impacting many people and their ability to, to care for themselves. As Fabian said earlier, he decided, well, he's not going to any barber. He's going to shave his hair at home. I know when we first went on lockdown, I did my hair for quite some time, you know, myself. Not that I haven't done it before, but I chose to not to go back to my stylist for quite a while. And many others would have made similar decisions. Others may have been impacted in terms of feelings of anxiety, not being able to socialize, not being able to connect with others, feeling alone, feeling isolated, uh, feeling trapped in their homes, et cetera. And many people are still perhaps experiencing these things. And some are explaining that that is why some are breaking curfews and so on and breaking um, the protocols because they've had enough and they're suffering from COVID fatigue. But when we look at this whole question of caring for the self from the inside, what kinds of strategies or ideas would any of you give, and I'm going to throw this out and make this open, whoever wants to answer first can jump in. What kinds of strategies would you give? What kinds of advice would you give to those of our viewers, to us all, with respect to how we move through the challenges brought by COVID as it relates to the need to look after ourselves, both spiritually and physically? All right, I'm going to jump right in as a medical doctor. I'm going to say get vaccinated. Get okay. vaccinated. This is my plea to the public to get vaccinated. We know about the social distancing. We know about the masking. But the vaccination rates have to go up so that we can get herd immunity. I think the, the persons that have come ahead so far to be vaccinated, they've done a good job. But we still have to get more people vaccinated. So this is my urgent plea to get vaccinated because... The vaccinations will definitely help in terms of beating back COVID. Um, the other thing is to get your body healthy. If you're healthy, um, even though, even if you catch COVID, you have a higher probability of, of, um, of fighting it off. You mm -hmm. will notice that a lot of the deaths that we've had are from people who've had NCDs, which are non-communicable diseases. So for persons out there who have things like diabetes, hypertension, you definitely want to get those under control. If you were not taking your medicines before, you want to take the medicines now and control the diabetes, control the hypertension. And if you're in that category where you have, let's say if you're obese, you want to lose some weight so you don't become diabetic or hypertensive. So you definitely want to look after yourself, um, definitely from a diet and exercise perspective. If you're on medication, you definitely want to take your medication to control those non-communicable diseases so that if indeed you, you, you if perchance you catch the corona, um, it does not affect your body as if those things were uncontrolled. 
Um, but okay. definitely vaccination. I would definitely say vaccination. Okay. okay. Any other contributors? Yes. Since um, Dr. Matthews spoke about diet, I would like to jump in here by saying that it's very important that you train your children to eat a balanced diet. The evidence has shown, as Dr. Matthews um, stated, that the persons who have the comorbidities are the ones who are, are, are dying. So we therefore need to train our children to consume balanced diets. We, the adults need to put things in place. The so children are home. So you, you need to take care of your family. People complain that eating healthy is expensive, but is it really? If you look at an apple, a gala apple could be about 75 cents. A parent will go into the supermarket and buy a pack of Olay, which is a dollar fifty. A pear is a dollar twenty-five, and that is imported. A party mix is two dollars and fifty cents, I think, of two twenty-five. So I, we also have to stop saying that to eat healthy is um, expensive. We need to consider what is going to happen with my child or my children. If I continue to, to feed them to, to these um, with these egg, these high salty, high fat, high sugary snacks, because we want them to be able to pull a cupboard, cut, prepare the prepare the fruits or the vegetables on the morning, put them in the fridge. You could even put them in a Ziploc bag. The child could go into the fridge and select whatever um, fruit he wants to eat. Eat. Water, let the child put the water in the fridge or even adult, I do it. I have a bottle of water. I know I need to drink two bottles of that water a day. That's a good measure of how the, we can um, we consume or we know the amount of water that we are consuming. So we need to prepare for our families, especially now that our children are on, online prepare for them so that they can grab and go. But we also need to teach them how to prepare for themselves. Okay, thank you. Oh, so the other thing I just want to mention quickly, um, I have noticed that the children tend to mimic the parents. So it's important that the parents do it and guide the kids the because right. they do what the parents do. So if the parents start to live that healthy, balanced um, diet, to, to use that healthy balanced diet, then the children tend to do that. So um, I normally say do it as a family so that the children don't feel like they're under pressure because they tend to mimic what the parents are doing. Thank you. Fabian, you were saying something? Yes, I just wanted to also say that um, for persons out there that's, that, that's battling with this whole COVID environment, be careful of the information that you take into your head. You know, there's a lot of negativity out there. There's a lot of things that are putting people in a very bad space mentally. So mm -hmm. be very cautious. Sometimes if you have to take a social media break, then do so. Yes. If you have to take, if you have to stop buying newspapers for a short time, then do that. If you need to stop watch television and listen to the radio, then do that. But be careful with what you put into your brain. A lot of this is what is driving people into these real dark, um, spaces um, into, into some of uh, the space of these depressive type of behaviors. Um, I also want to join um, Dr. Matthews in terms of the vaccinations. Uh, we have, I mean, looking back at the dashboard, there's a difference of 17,000 in terms of men versus women. So men are on the lower side. There's 17,000 more women uh, based on the dashboard are vaccinated than men. So men, I just want to let you know, you know, step up. Um, again, get the right information, and I also want to support the vaccination and getting your vaccine. It is very important and, and it's the responsible thing to do. And lastly, I really want for those persons who definitely cannot go outside, use that opportunity, as my good friend Tony Orton would say, to go inside. Take yes. that time to get to understand self. You know, ask yourself, I mean, look at your purpose in life. Um, if there are some skills that you need to tighten up on, use that time to work on you, you know. Um, you know, so so be very, very cautious or be very aware, sorry, conscious of yourself during that time if you're supposed to navigate this whole COVID environment. Yeah. 
I, I would just add to that point, Fabian. I, I think that I always like to say we, we have to reach a stage where we where we can redirect our energy. And COVID has really, really put a damper on a lot of persons. Um, the, 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 the volume of information that has come in, it, it really puts you in a, in a very um, somber kind of feeling. So it's important that you redirect that energy. And one of the things I've been suggesting to people is that because of COVID, it doesn't mean that you cannot birth um, positive things during this time. And it is important that you sometimes just sit with yourself and understand what are the things that you're grateful for? What are those dreams that you've always had? Um, that this is a time that you could really start to, to chart a, pa- a plan. Um, and this is one of the things I speak about quite often is having a game plan because even as a, as a career professional, I always say you still have to be able to direct your own path because and, and not allow others to do that for you so it's very important that you could maybe sit sit down with some with yourself with a notebook and say what are the things I'm grateful for what are five things in my life I'm grateful for what are five things in my life that I always wanted to do and what is the thing that's giving me the greatest fulfillment right now and I think that once we start to ask ourselves those very very important questions then you could start saying well am I being too hard on myself or do I need to go a little harder and and you know that's where I would would kind of put in terms of redirecting your energy. I love that idea, Alison, of redirecting of the energy, because I know that when COVID first started, particularly those who were involved in the arts, a lot of people, we saw a lot of art being created. We saw a lot of people doing dance, you know, um, people um, emphasize the need to journal, write poetry. Um, You know, not everybody may be into that type of thing, but you could probably pick up a hobby, gardening, Mm -hmm. growing a plant on the inside, redecorating if you could, um, changing things around in the home, just making things more aesthetically pleasing, just changing the color of the curtains and and changing your bed sheets more regularly, creating a safe space inside of your home so that you feel better about yourself and about your surroundings. And all of this is about taking care of yourself so that you can manage this time that we are going through this very difficult challenging time that we're going through as a globe um and i I think that need to look inward as fabian mentioned is very very critical um reflection is is absolutely essential and uh, we talk a lot about being compassionate towards others but we also need to exercise self-compassion you know we need to, to to give us give ourselves a break sometimes you know so thank you so much for your for your contribution there allison Okay, we are winding down, and um, I think we are uh, just a bit past 7.30. So I'm going to invite each of you now to just give your closing comments in just about a minute. We have been looking at the topic, Take Good Care of Me, um, Self-Care and Renewal from the Inside Out, and we've been focusing on the need to take care of our bodies and our minds and our emotions. We look just a little bit at education and this, this, these fields of endeavor uh, and what students are doing in the area of cosmetology, etc. But the focus has been on looking at the self and of the need to take care of the self to be able to navigate life, not only now during the time of COVID, but anytime. So I'm going to give each of the panelists now one minute to just close off your final comments. I, I guess I'll just jump in. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I, I would say that, you know, we're at a stage where a lot is happening around us. It is it, a lot of it. Um, while there's a lot of good, there's a lot of uh, negativity going on around us. And I, I just made the point that you need to, you need to be able to redirect your, your energy. But I also think that it is time for persons to really start to get to know themselves better. And under, with the understanding that the way you view yourself makes a huge difference to how you show up in this world um and i just want to really you know say say to persons that if you are genuinely putting in the work to become a better version of yourself then give yourself some grace because we are not in normal times and therefore it is important that while you're still being progressive in terms of going after what you want recognizing that slow and study also works so it is important that if you're you know if you've experienced some setbacks don't see that as a 
failure. It is literally, you're still moving and the whole objective is just to move, just to continue to move towards your dreams, to move towards your goals, to move to, towards being a better person, uh, spiritually healthy in terms of your health, in terms of generating wealth. And also just on a final point, get in the habit of cheering for yourself. You need to be that. You need to be your biggest cheerleader because if you sit and wait for others, you will always feel as though you're you, you're at a point of needing that validation. Sometimes that validation needs to come from you. You have to take ownership for yourself, how you're feeling, how you condition your mind so that you can self-regulate as often as is needed so that you're not being rubbed the wrong way by, by others or the things that are happening around you. You need to start to own the control of you as a person so that you can continue to evolve as a better person. Thank you so much. Maxine, one minute. Okay. Um, I just want to take a look at, at, at health um, home care. And, we're, and I know that persons are, are strapped for cash and there are ways and means that you uh, you can do things at home um you know to beautify yourself and to make yourself feel relaxed something as simple as you know using some aromatherapy oils in a diffuser um and those are things that you can you can do and you can um and you can relax. Um, I know that a lot of people are, are stressed because of one thing, maybe because they don't have enough money, because they may, they may be um, accustomed doing something and, and they're not able to do it anymore. So there are um, things that you can do. You can go into the kitchen and, and, and find some oatmeal or some or cornmeal or something mix it with some honey and do a facial, make yourself feel good. Um, do some, do some inhalations, do some, um, get some boiling water, put some oils in it and just cover your head and just relax. It would not only clear your, your sinuses, it will not only make you relax, but it will also um, steam your skin and, and open up your pores, help you to, to perspire, get some of those toxins from your system. So there are a lot of things that, that, um, that we can, in some, some cases we can, can go, um, cause I know that there are persons who are, are a little anxious of all of what is happening out there with the COVID and everything, but stay safe and understand that there are things that you can do with yourself, reflect, um, and, and just, just understand who you are and just, just mellow out, just mellow out. Thank you, Maxine. Excellent points. Fabian? Um, oh, sorry. okay. Dr. Matthew? Dr. Matthew? Yes. Wine. Okay. Um, I normally tell my patients, um, the, the analogy I use uh, you know, when you get on a plane, they say, put your oxygen mask on, and then you put your, the mask on for the children. Now is the time for you to put your oxygen mask on. Now is the time for you to look after self. You don't get a second chance at this, guys. You only get one chance or one shot at life, and now is your chance to take the best care of the body that God has given you. Um, you want to have a balanced meal. You want to exercise you want to meditate, you definitely want to look after self. And the sooner you do it, the better it is for you, not only for you, but for your family. Because as was said earlier on the panel, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So it is for you to be filled, to fill yourself with energy, with vitality, with the right foods, so that then you can give not only to your family, but to your friends. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Matthew. Fabian? Yes, I'm big on parenting. So I would end by saying, parents, be careful with how you raise your boys. You know, um, be very, very, I mean, be very purposeful in terms of what you do. Um, boys need to be told and taught how to treat themselves. They need to be taught the importance of wellness and health. They need to be taught the importance of paying attention to their mental state. So that is exactly where it starts. So parents, I'm reaching out to you to, to really, really uh, start that conversation if you have not started it as yet and build that relationship and also improve that emotional vocabulary so that these young boys, as they become men and they want to feel much better about themselves, 
themselves, they're able to express themselves vocally, verbally, okay? They're able to talk and say these things and that they will know exactly what they're feeling and they can identify with the particular feelings and name these feelings. Um, all of that contributes to, to how they feel about themselves in terms of um, their confidence and their whole self-image. Thank you so much, Fabian. I'm not sure if you still have Heather with us. It seems not. So I just, I'm just going to wrap up and I want to say that you've all done some excellent contributions and from what, we, what you've all said, we can take that we all need to eat more healthy. We need to exercise. We need to rely a lot on our indigenous foods and perhaps growing our own kitchen garden and planting some fruit trees and buying healthy foods, fruits and vegetables and grains, et cetera. And we need to take care of ourselves. We need to spend time on ourselves time on how we look, yes. And if you're unable to go out and get it done with a qualified beautician, we can still you know, create those scrubs at home as Maxine shared with us just now. Perhaps give ourselves a spa day, do our nails, enjoy, light some candles, enjoy some aromatherapy, have some dim delights and just enjoy some soothing music, perhaps turn off the cell phone and um, just enjoy a, a space where we can really reflect and turn inward as we've all been told today spend some time turning inward, look within ourselves, see what we need to accomplish in life, what goals we have, what short-term goals we can perhaps achieve and do those things and the long-term dreams and goals that we have. Don't put them all over the picture, write them down and, and ruminate on them, think on them and think of strategies and ways that we can achieve those long-term dreams and goals. And this is all a part of the need to look after you take care of you. See that as imperative. See that as a critical priority in your life. It will, it will stand you in good stead, not only in terms of your personal life, but also in terms of your professional life. Because I always say, when someone is happy with themselves personally, in their personal lives, that will um, extend to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of their job, even when there are challenges. So I just want to encourage all of you to take heart, Remember our theme for this evening's discussion, take good care of me, self-care and renewal from the inside out. We're not relying on anyone else to do it. We're going to do it ourselves. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us this evening for this health and wellness panel discussion brought to you by the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training in celebration of our Education Month 2021. I want to thank the planning committee for working so hard in ensuring that this event came off this evening. I want to thank MRD for their technical support and all others in the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training um, who made this possible. I want to thank our panelists, Mrs. Alison Brown Ellis, Dr. Donna Matthew, Miss Maxine Thomas and Mr. Fabian Sargent, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us this evening to share from your life experiences, from your professional opinions, and from your heart. And audience, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to drop by and to join us for this most enlightening discussion. Remember to join us for other virtual events next Thursday evening at 6 p.m. in the same location on MRD's YouTube channel. We will have another panel discussion where we will be discussing with educators our theme for Education Month, which is Education Reimagined exploring new frontiers for teaching, learning, and national development in the 21st century. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us this evening. God bless you and stay safe. Good evening.